Hello and welcome to Freedom Zone Worship Center. Um, glad to have you be a part of the service. Um, just thankful to God that you're taking the time to tune in to um, listen in with us. Uh, as we continue to pray for you, we ask that you continue to uh, pray for us. Uh, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you once again for allowing us to gather here. We thank you, Father, for just continuing to work to us, in, in us, through us, oh God, and that your, your will and perfect will be done in our lives. Father, we ask that you look upon all those that are tuning in to the service this day, oh God. Bless us all, oh God, to be increased in your word. Bless us, Lord God, to continue to grow in you. And bless us, oh God, to continue to fall more and more in love with you. We thank you and we glorify you. For it is in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Again, so glad to have you be a part of the um, service today. And we're going to um, just talk a little about um, about love, uh, about love. Uh, um, believe that in this day and time, we've learned so many things. And sometimes we've learned and can carry out a church service with out um, having God in it at all and um, without God there is no love in what we do and uh, without love there is no God in what we do and so we're going to talk about about love it's not just enough to go to church it's not just enough to read the Bible and um, many of us do but uh, make sure that our actions are uh, are showing forth um, showing forth the love because um, we do know that the word says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And many times in life, we go through things and uh, and it affects us. It hurts us. It causes us griefs and pains. And and um, we, we, we have to overcome that. And sometimes it, it, it distorts or it messes up us being able to love or to love like we should. And I want to encourage you, I don't care how much you go to church, how much you read, make sure you're growing in love, that you are growing in love, that you're allowing God's love to flow through you. Um, you know, I, I think about um, Corinthians 13 and 13 says, now by the faith, hope, and love, these three but the greatest of these is love. The greatest of these is love. Love trumps faith. Love trumps hope. That love is the greatest of these. Um, we're going to read in the scripture where it talks about how even love covers some things. And um, so just want to talk with you a little and, and, and hopefully um, spark you or prompt you to um, check your love meter. Um, check your love meter and See and make sure that you're loving uh, like you should and that we're loving like we should, because I think it's a sad thing for us to be Christians and say we love God and the world don't feel any of that love. Um, you know, that it's a lot of things going on in the world right now. And, uh, and, and I think about it, if, if we all love like we should, the, how, what a wonderful place the world would be. What a wonderful place the world would be if we exemplified, if we show forth the love that we talk about, the love that we preach about uh, so much, if we actually exemplified it. And I'll tell you this, is not always an easy thing. And many times it's, uh, I, I see people are quick to quote a scripture and quick to throw out a scripture a lot quicker than they will loving on somebody because that's easier. That's uh, easier to throw out what you uh, what the Bible say and what you should be somebody else should be doing and not actually walking in love ourselves. And this uh, thing of it is love is is, is, is felt. And we're going to read a, a scripture and then just talk with you for um, just a little while, because um, love is something that, again, we should be exemplifying. It's not based on if, if the other person is saved or not. It's, is based on like the word say to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And I don't know about you, but I want to be loved. I want to be loved, so I give forth love. And and I, I'm not. I try to see the glass, and hope we all start seeing the glass half full and not half empty. But um, the world needs love. There's a song that says, "What the world needs now is love." That the world needs love because it's one of the things that there are so little of. And I think about with all of us as Christians and 
all of us saying how we love the Lord and love each other as brothers and sisters, um, which I don't really care for. I'm being real with you because uh, if you don't really love like a brother and love each other as a brother and a sister, then we don't need to use that at all. Because um, it means a lot to those that have grown up with brothers and sisters than we are used to and know how, uh, how it feels for a sibling to, to love you. Um, so let's um, make sure again we check our love meter and, 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 and work on growing in, uh, and growing in love. Let's start with First Peter, First Peter, um, the fourth chapter, First um, Peter, the fourth chapter. And we're going to read the seventh through the eleventh verse. That's First Peter, the um, fourth chapter. And, you know, a lot of times and, and it's uh, uh, I tell people that, you know, you can quote scripture in your, in your head is so much better to live a scripture than just quote a scripture. Um, you know, it's if we concentrate on love and uh, tell people with me and and, uh, you know, that God, when God called me to pastor, that's one of them, the the main thing that he laid in my heart was to let people know that he loved them, that he loves them, that he truly loves them. He haven't stopped loving them. And, you know, we made sometimes we make people feel they're so bad. God can't love them. But yet the fact of it is that God loved us all enough that he sent his only begotten son, not because of how good we were or how good we could ever be, but because he loved us, just simply because he loved us, just simply because he loved us. Many people are trying to work their way into the kingdom and trying to work their way into blessings and uh, and earn this and earn that. And uh, if we just humble ourselves before God and love him, truly, truly love God like we should and love each other as we should. You know, that's and, and that, that, that's saying a lot because we we talk a lot. But then the true love one for another. A lot of people even nowadays and, you know, the pandemic and we're not going to church as much. But many times people were going to church and couldn't stand somebody else in the church, had a problem with people. They're calling their brother and their sister. So maybe God just decided, well, then let's all go home and pray a little before we come back together. And maybe we even treat each other a little, little a little better. Because this, this thing about love is not just turn off and on like a switch. God loved us enough that he sacrificed his son. And it wasn't a temporary thing. You know, there was so much depth to his love. And there's still so much depth to God's love. And, and many times we haven't really uh, 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 given people the facts concerning the depths of God's love. That is not a, you know, God love you today. He don't love you tomorrow. You you didn't do all this or you didn't do that or you messed up. And so God didn't withdrew his love from us and all of that. God loves us. God loves us to the point to where do you not know that even if you don't go to heaven, that's not going to deter or stop God from loving you. His love is unconditional. He wants us all. His, it, it's his will that none shall, shall, should perish that none shall perish. That's, that is his will. But his love for us is unconditional. A lot of the parents, you understand it because you love your children. They're not the, always the best in the world. They can do some things and do some, some really bad things, but it does not diminish your love for them. So we can love each other, but with us, it's, we pick and choose. You know, we'll love our, our um family are hard-headed or knuckleheads or whatever may be in the family, we still love them. We may talk about them with our brothers and sisters, and but don't nobody else, you know, don't nobody else need to try to talk about them because we love them, because we love them and we don't want to see any harm come to them. So if we loved each other like that, and we loved each other like that, because you do know when it comes to everything being over down here, uh, you know, like with Jesus asking, who is my mother, who is my brother? And he said, those that believe. So I hope you know and hope we realize that uh, when we get to heaven, it's not going to be about all oh, just our bio biological family members. It's going to be about the blood washed family members, um, those that are in the, in the body of, of Christ. Here it is. First um, Peter four and seven says, but the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. Be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another. Fervent love for one another. We can't harp on that enough. I, 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 I 
I get excited when I um, uh, talk about the, the love of God and the love that we should have one for another. The love that we should have one for another. It's not just lip service. It's, it's, it's loving, wanting the best for you and you wanting the best for me. Being willing to help one another. And when I look at that, and above all things, have fervent love for one another. Fervent love. Now, Webster says that fervent means having having or exhi uh, exhibiting great emotion or warmth or zeal. Great emotion or great warmth or great zeal. Not just ordinary, but great. And here it is, God in, in his words saying, above all things have fervent love for one another. Fervent love for one another one another fervent love for one another having great love or warmth or zeal towards one another loving one another I, I, I think the world that the church could turn the world upside down if we simply exemplify the love that God have told us to exemplify first to our one another since we're coming in here come in the building and, and since we all name that uh, Christ as our savior and then love the world then love the world, then, meaning that not love the things of the world. But when I'm going to say love the world, I'm talking about love people, love people, love people. They don't have to act the way you want them to act, but still love them. That we get so caught up in how we feel and, and somebody did this and somebody did that. Not thinking about, well, look at what all we've done to Christ, to, to God, to God, our father. What all we did, the words say that while we were alienated, while we was without hope, why was that hope without hope? Rather, he sent his son to die for us. He didn't just look at how we was acting and what we was doing. He looked at his love for us, his love for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. When we was at our worst, he loved us. He loved us perfectly and sent his son to die for us. How much do we love one another? How much do we truly love one another? We talk about it. We read scripture, but as a pastor, sometimes I, I, I talk with people and or observe people and and I wonder where is all this love we read about and talk about when it comes to practicality, when it comes to exemplifying, when it, when it comes to showing love. We're short tempered and have no patience and and you don't. That's the that's the last straw and and all of these things. When it comes to exemplifying God's love. Now, don't, I'm not trying to get it confused with love is not giving somebody all your money. You know, love is not somebody on drugs and and, and, and you opening your house up to them and, you know, and, and, and uh, not keeping a watch on things. Or like I say, just handing all your money out to people. No, it's, it's love is genuinely caring about how people are doing. You may not can change anything concerning their situation, but genuinely caring about how they're doing enough that they know it, that they feel it. You know, they talk about children being a good character, a uh, judge of character. And, and uh, uh, you know, sometimes kids avoid certain people. And, and, and you know, and I, I look at it about knowing people by the spirit, as the Lord, as the Bible says, know people by the, their, um, by the spirit and not by the, the flesh. Flesh, rather, but it's 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 where we act in such a way that people feel the warmth of the love, even when we tell them no. Even when I tell, if you tell somebody no, I don't have to tell it. I don't have to say it ugly. I don't have to curse them out. I can just tell them no. I'm not going to do this or not going to give that, but still do it with kindness. Because I look at what God tell us no, and He don't slam dunk us. You just say, no, we can cry, have a pity party, flip upside down, read scripture for seven days fast and still thinking it's going to change God's mind. And he'd tell us no and no, no means no. I know we can go back and some would say, well, the, 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 the blessing of God, that's right. The blessings of God is yes and amen. But God does tell us no to some things, just like you told your children no to something that you knew would hurt them. So it's how we do things and how we operate and long as we operate in love. But here it is, say, and above all things, have fervent love for one another. Have fervent love for one another. Do you have fervent love for the rest of mankind? 
I'm not going to say, you know, and, and especially for the church, because that's what I, is amazing to me. And all my growing up from a child um, and seeing people that love the Lord and, you know, and then have attitudes with one another. And, and we all we don't all agree, agree on everything all the time, but we don't have to be disagreeable. And I don't have to get where I don't want to see you or speak to you because we had a disagreement about something. And, and, and realizing this, too, that the Bible say now we see dimly. Now we see dimly. We need to stop thinking that we've arrived, that I know everything and I'm the deepest one. And no, if you want to be the deepest, be the one that showed the most love. Be the one that showed the most love and you'll be the deepest. Because the one that showed the most love, just like Jesus came down here, he said he came to serve. He had the, mo had the power, but he loved enough that he came down to serve. Came down to serve because he loved us. And so he came to serve us and help bridge the gap and bring us back to the, to the Father. Above all things, have, have fervent love for one another. So remember that fervent love for one another is, is having, uh, ex, ex, exil, ex, exil, uh, exhibiting rather great emotion, uh, warmth, and zeal toward one another. Glad to see one another. Glad to see somebody doing well, even if you're not doing that well. Even if you're not doing that well, it's amazing how, like, once again, as parents, we can uh, want the kids to do better, the children rather, to do better than, than we are. And we're happy to see them get a bigger house, or happy to see them get a job paying more, happy to see them get a newer car. It brings us joy. But sometimes when it comes to us, dealing with us, as for us Christians, then we're not as happy seeing one another be blessed. But fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Love will cover a multitude of sins. Now, it's amazing as Christians, uh, you know, something happened and your phone ringing off the hook. People can't wait to tell about somebody else's shortcoming or somebody else's failure. But then we have a problem when people are talking about us. But love will cover a multitude of sin. God's love covering, is covering us. When, when God, look, the Father looks on us and we're saved and we're under the blood, he see the blood. He see the blood. He don't see you and I because there's nothing good in you and I other than the spirit of God. The Bible says that all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. All of our righteousness is as filthy rags. The best we could ever be outside of God can't add up. Can't add up. So it's it's not me being more important and bigger than you and this and that because I don't do what you do and this one don't do that one. It's 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 about us knowing that because of God and the grace of God, the mercy of God, the mercy of God, that love covers a multitude of sin. Because you may stumble. I won't talk about you. I may stumble today, but it may be you tomorrow. And the Bible says for us to restore a one. We're talking about love here. We're talking about love. We're talking about love. I've seen uh, um, te um, television evangelists and, and preachers, um, excuse me, um, on television and people, preachers around locally. And, 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 and you know, that some, they, they, they fall and people seem, the, the church folks seem to be happy. Seem to be happy. <laughs> You know, and it's like, where is the love? We are one body. We are one body. And when did, my hand does not dislike my other hand or my eyes, my hand is glad to have my eyes. And my eyes are glad to have my hands and, and my arm and my legs. It's one body. If my hand starts hurting, then the rest of the body is concerned about that hand. And if it needs to be bandaged up, then we're going to bandage it, ban put a Band-Aid on it or go to the doctor and take some uh, medicine for it. And, and then the other parts of the body is going to help get the medicine in so that the hand can be healed. And here we look at the word, say love will cover a multitude of sin. When's the last time something has happened and you prayed for the person more than you talked about the person? We're talking about love. We're talking about love, just simply talking about love. 
and as as believers in church church uh, church church folks because I'm, I'm I, I can be truthful to you I'm, I'm hard on church uh, people or Christians rather because we look at the world to solve something and the world can't solve anything it's the, it's the body of Christ you know the Bible talks about judgment beginning at the in the house of God and and another scripture say, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and turn, turn from their wicked ways and seek God's face, humble themselves, seek God's face. And then we'll hear from heaven and he'll forgive us, forgive us of our sins and heal the land. But we have to love each other enough. We have to love enough that we're willing to come together and turn and willing to pray for one another and willing to not just talk about one another and be glad when something negative happened to somebody. Let's pray for one another. Let's genuinely pray for one another. Now, love will cover multitudes of sin. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. Be kind and nice without grumbling. I'm tired of doing for this one. It's just, a, it's just, a, a, I like to say, amazing that it, it be hospitable to one another without grumbling, without grumbling, complaining. You had to help somebody. How about let's start saying a kind word? I tell people during the pandemic that the telephone still works. Start calling somebody, encouraging them, praying for them, letting them know you're just on my mind and and I and I care about you and I love you. And you know, we 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 were scared that uh, this ain't talking about no in love. This is loving people. This is like just genuinely, genuinely loving people, because the truth of it is many times we don't say it much, but everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants to be loved. Everybody want to know somebody care about me. Somebody's concerned about how I'm doing. Um, continuing on on the 10th verse, as each one has received a gift, minister it to one another. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God. It's just by the grace of God that we're here. It's by the grace of God that we're able to do for one another. It's just by the grace of God. It's by the grace of God that we're even able to love. Because you think about how harsh life have been sometimes and to still have your heart protected that you're able to love. And if you're not, allow God to get in there and do some operating on so that your heart is softened, softened, softened rather, and you can love. Quit, bring down some of the, the barricades and, and that you put up around your heart and the, the brick walls and the steel walls you put up around your heart and, and, and now scared to just scared to love somebody. And I'm not talking about just about getting falling in love and marrying somebody that sometimes we, we, we've closed off to all of that too but I'm just talking about it. what I'm talking about right now is the body of Christ Christians loving on one another just simply loving on one another if anyone speaks let him speaks as the oracles of God if anyone minister let him do it as with the ability with God which God rather supplies that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. That God may be glorified. When we love one another, God is glorified. When we treat one another as brothers and sisters, God is glorified. God is glorified. When we, when, when we, love, on, when we love on people, when we love on people that even if they're not doing right and they're able to, to feel love and that somebody loves them and care about them. I have people talk with people that don't may not go to church at all, but I let them know I care about them. It ain't about how good they are, how bad they are. It's not about me trying to get them to change and do this and that. Uh, nobody could change me. God changed me. I came to God and he made changes in my life. We can lead people to Christ. In fact, we can witness, which is our duty is to, 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 to witness to people. To love them and witness to them, but you can't change anyone. But we can love them even if they don't change. Even if they don't change, we can love them. Because it may not be today, it may not be this year. But who knows if we keep loving on them and praying for them. It may be next year. It may be next year or even if it's five years from now. Or even if it comes down to like the thief on the cross and it's at the very last hour they give their life to Christ. They still make it in. And hopefully and prayerfully, we've made a part, we played a part in that by sharing with them how good God is. 
and simply loving on them. And the last one, they, they say that uh, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Check your love meter. Check your love meter. We're going to be talking about love for a while because we need to we, we, we need to practice up on some love. We need to exemplify some love. The, 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 the Bible said that they'll know that we are Christians. How? They'll know that we are Christians, not by how big a Bible we carry in our arms. Come on, let's be real. They will know that we are Christians. They even have a song about it. But they know that we're Christian not by speaking in tongues and not by prophesying and, 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 and not by how much money we pay and not by how many times we go to church and not by how loud we play our gospel music. The word of God says that they would know that we are Christians by our love, by our love. Now, many of us trying to show that we're Christian by how we put on our church clothes or, or, or like I say, quote scriptures. I tell people simply this, that the, the, the devil himself can quote scriptures better than any of us. But he can't live any of the scripture. He can't love. He can't love. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And we should love God enough that we give ourselves to him. And we should love each other. We should love each other enough that I want to see the best for you. That I'm not trying to uh, critique and analyze and waiting for you to, 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 to do something so I can pounce on you like a, 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 a bad dog. And I got you, you know, and you look how bad you are and all of this stuff. Even when it comes to what I'm doing now and being on um, uh, social media, you know, I, I tell people, I say, yes, yeah, it's, it's a little scary because it was uh, we've talked about it for a while. But to know that. Um, you know, you may mispronounce a word and somebody is, you know, like, look what he, how he, he didn't pronounce that right. And, uh, you know, and I'm a Southern and, you know, Florida is as Southern as you can go and, and may, may pronounce something with a Southern draw and, you know, somebody critique that and say something about it. But that's not what it's about. All of us are to do things to the best of our abilities. Just like we were saying earlier, if you ministered, minister at the unction of God and whatever we do, we should be uh, uh, the Holy Spirit should lead and guide us in it. But when it comes to dealing with one another, we should show some love. We should show some love. If trying to make a mistake, love them through it. Love them through it. Love them through it. And I know that's not what we've been doing. We, we reserve that for our close family. We reserve that for our close family. You know, they no matter what, but the church. Church, we, 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 you know, we, we sometimes I've seen people, the way they act is like they're so glad that, oh, they, that they want all they th say they want, or they want all, they cracked up to be or whatever when they, somebody make a mistake and, 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 and we're glad. But the truth of it is, none of us was perfect, perfect in the first place. The truth of it is, without Christ, we're nothing. I don't care how we dress, how we act, without Christ, we're nothing. And that he has no respect of person. I don't care how many, uh, how big of a church, how little of a church. I don't care how big of a house, how small of a house. Uh, you can drive a 19, uh, 19 uh, 2020 uh, vehicle, top notch, or you can buy, be driving a 1985, whatever. It, 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 it doesn't make you any less than anybody. It doesn't make you any better than anybody. may have more, but it doesn't make you any better. It's about love. It's about love, my brothers and sisters. It's about us loving one another. I do want to, um, because I don't want to be too long, I do want to go to another scripture. Second Peter, if you would go to Second Peter, verse, I mean, chapter one. Second Peter, chapter one, verse one. We're going to start there. And, uh, Second Peter, chapter one, Beginning at verse one, and it reads that those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus, our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. 
who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. And we talked about that last week, the promises of God, or that God has promised good to me. God has promised good to us. He's promised good to us, and he is good to us. And let's go ahead and love like we should. Let's, let's exemplify our Christian life through love that the world, see, just like, in fact, I think about how the words say that by loving kindness have God drawn us. So let's love on one another and let's love on, the, the, on, on people that, make, that don't know God enough that maybe we can, that, that, that we should exemplify and show the love of God to them. And it may, it's, that it may make a difference in their, their life. But by which we have given to us exceeding great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We're blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. Continuing on. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. I'm going to teach more on this because uh, I like to uh, teach concerning add to with this. But if you want to get to a part dealing with love. But giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and virtue knowledge to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness. And you look at what godliness is. And I, I thought that was very interesting that it's, it's saying that we have some stuff, the, 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 the knowledge and self-control that we need to be working on some things. Self-control. And one of the things we need to try to control the most is this tongue. This tongue. How many people have been destroyed, killed by what we have said that we can't take back? And yet we say we love. How can we say we love and then we use our tongue to destroy it? But self-control, perseverance, perseverance, God add godliness to godliness, brotherly kindness. To godliness, add some brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. To brotherly kindness, add some love. Don't just be kind to people. Love people. I tell people all the time, and I even used to tell my coworkers, I don't like people. I love people. I love people. I love people. Yeah, that, that, it, it doesn't mean it's, it's uh, the way that is easy all the time or, you know, but it, it's because people can be mean. People can be this or that and people can not like you at all. People can not care for you at all. And you don't have to do nothing to them at all. But that doesn't stop you from loving them. It doesn't stop you from loving them. I think about what's so much going on and protest and all of that. But let's still love people. I still love people. Parents correct their children, but they still love them. God correct us, but he still love us. In fact, he say correct us because he love us. So let's not get what we don't, you know, we, we hating people and this and that because of the way they are. Let's still exemplify love. But add brotherly kindness to godliness, to godliness. And you say you're godly and living godly. Okay, now add some brotherly kindness to that. Be kind to me. <laughs> let's be kind to one another. And then as we're being kind, let's step it on up a little further and add some love to that kindness. Let's add love for these things are yours and abound. You will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you want to know God, if you want to really, really know God in a, on a deeper level, don't just be virtuous. Don't just be uh, 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 godly. Don't just be knowledgeable. Don't just have self-control, but show some brotherly kindness. Show, show, show some kindness. Show some kindness with your Holy Ghost filled self. Show some kindness with your quoting scripture self. You know all the scriptures. Now add some kindness to that. Don't be looking all mean and all the time when you're quoting scriptures and telling people how bad they are. Add some kindness to that. And while you're adding that kindness, or after you add that kindness, how about throw a dose of love in there? A big, big, big dose of it. A big dose of it, because sometimes that's what we've been lacking. We've been saved and loved the Lord and wonder why nobody cared to be around us. Why nobody cared to deal with us. And we're coughing off on, oh, people don't want to do right, and that's why they don't, they shun me. No, 
You don't know. Sometimes it's like we don't know how. Sometimes we, we, we haven't allowed ourselves to love as we should. And we can be kind. We do kind deeds. And isn't that interesting? Because they add to kindness, love. We do kind deeds. Oh, I did this and there was a need or there was a cause and I helped out. That's wonderful. You are just so kind. Huh? Hand, hats off to you. Okay, now let's step on up to that love factor. That love factor. Because we're kind. To, sometimes we go out and we're kind to everybody, but we only love at home. Kind all around, but only love at home. Only love at home. And love goes a, a lot further than kindness. We should be kind, and I'm glad if people are kind. I'm glad you're kind. But let's add some love to it, because if we want to grow in God and be closer to God and show people God, then we need to also get to where we show them some love. But we show them some love. For these are uh, abound. You, you need to be, you think about that, you need to be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's awesome. But he who likes these things is short sighted, short sighted, short sighted. If we're not working on all these things and if we're not getting to the point to where we're showing some love, then we're short sighted. And you do know that down here is going to this, this earth is going to pass away. You and I are going to pass away. You and I are going to pass away. You think about it 20 years from now, 50 years from now, a, a whole lot of us, a whole lot of us that would be on the, other, on the other side. But we want to be able to hear the Lord say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I want somebody down here to be able to say that I love them. That they, they, they felt that I was genuine and that I genuinely loved them, not because of what they had or didn't have or who they were or who they're not. But simply because they were made in the image of God, because God didn't make no junk and God didn't make any mistakes. People may not be the way you want them to be, may not look the way you want them to look, act the way you want them to act. But God haven't made any mistakes, haven't made any mistakes. He didn't make any mistakes on us. He didn't make us too tall, too short, too dark, too light, too thin, too big. No, he made us in his image. He made us in his image. And we should love each other because we're made in his image. For he who likes these things is short-sighted, even to blindness. How blind are we sometimes? How blind are we sometimes? And has forgotten that he was cleansed. From his old sins that we've been cleansed we've been cleansed and since we've been cleansed let's put on more characteristics of God let's put on more characteristics of God and go back to first uh, Corinthians 13 and 13 and now about it faith hope and love these three but the greatest of these is love it's good that we have faith faith is a substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen it's good we have faith it's good we have hope, that we're hopeful. But let's have love, because love is the greatest of those three things. And verse 10 said, Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so, so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ, that an entrance would be provided for us. So, so let's work our way to love. Let's be kind, be virtuous, all these great things. But make sure you're loving. Make sure you're loving. Make sure you're loving. Make sure that you're genuinely loving on one another. Let's love on one another. Let's go above and beyond. And like I said, love, love is not just handing over money, but love is genuinely caring about somebody. Love is not, in fact, there's a scripture I didn't pull that one up about, show that love is kind, love is patient, love endures all things, hopes all things, and, and it, it's not evil, it's, it's, it's not wishing bad. Love is not trying to kill and destroy somebody, even, even if they've hurt you. And as Christians, being that the Bible said that behold, all, uh, as far as when we come to Christ, um, 
all things are passed away and behold, all things are, are, are new, that we're a new creation. We're a new creation. So things in life may have hurt us, but let's allow God to renew us so that we love genuinely. I, I, I urge each one of us as Christians to love, to love, to love. Let your, you, you, you know, your, your neighbors may not be the best of neighbors, but 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 show them some love. Show them that that you're a Christian by your your love. Your love, you know, the Bible says that no, we're a Christian by love one for another. But let's exemplify some love outside of just the church. Let's genuinely love one another and show for that. Because many times we're not even doing that. Well, let's check our love meter and see where we're at in love. Where we're at in loving at like we should. Since God loved us and loved us the way he loved us. Let's allow some of that love to pour out of us towards one another. Can we do that? Can we just show forth some love? Can we show forth some love? You know, you, you, you think about it. Sometimes children, you, 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 you discipline, you do this, you do that. And sometimes you just have to love them. Sometimes you have to simply love them. Let's love on one another. Let's encourage one another. The Bible even says that we can we can promote or encourage each other to do good. So let's encourage one another to do good. Let's encourage one another. Let's love on one another. Let's allow the love of God in us to spill out in onto others. Thank God for you. Tuning in and listening in to us today, and I pray that you pray for me, and I pray for you, and we pray for one another that the love of God will prevail, that the love of God will prevail in our lives and in the lives of those around us. That we truly show enough love for one another, that the world does see us and know that we're Christians. Because our love for one another. Because of our love for one another. Let's love on one another. Let's love. Let, let's, let, hey, let's love on people. and uh, they, 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 they don't have to understand it all. But just, just let's, let's just love on them. Let's show some love. Show some compassion. Just as God has shown us. And just as God is showing us. Because all of us need the love of God to survive. If God didn't love us, there'd be no grace. If God didn't love us, there'd be no mercy. But thank God that he loves us enough that he show forth grace. Thank God he loves us enough that he show forth mercy. Grace and mercy. Thank you, Lord God, for your grace and mercy. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. For loving us the way you love us, Father. Father, we just ask that you continue to look upon each one of us. Father, search our hearts. Search our hearts, O oh God, because you say that you judge us according to our hearts. So search our hearts, O oh Father, and help us. Help us to do some house cleaning in our heart, Father, that more of your love may be exemplified. Help us to genuinely love one another, Father. Help us, oh God, even now, those we're around and as we, uh, as the doors of the, uh, of the church buildings are open and we come back together, let us come back with more love for one another. Let, bless us to love our family, oh God, our friends, our loved ones, oh God, our neighbors. Bless us just to love like you love. Bless us, oh God, to overcome, oh God, our feelings and and caught up in the past, but to genuinely love from this point on, to genuinely love as you love, oh God. Bless us not to run and fear, be fearful of love, oh God, but to love and to receive love. Father, we just thank you for your word, and we just thank you for all those that tuned in. Look upon each and every household, oh God, each and every person that's listening. Touch each one of us. Strengthen us, encourage us, bring us closer unto you. Open up our hearts even more for love. Father, we thank you and we glorify you and praise you. For it is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Once again, we thank you for being a part of the um, uh, service today. I want to encourage all of our Freedom Zone Worship Center to, for us to love uh, as we should and, and um, pray for one another uh, and love one another. 
I just thank God for each one of you and I love you. I don't have a problem with loving people because God loved me and I thank God for him loving me. Uh, it's, you, know, you don't have to try to prove this or that to anybody. If you're saved, you're saved. But let's love one another. Let's love one another. Love those that think you're not good enough. Love those that think you're not saved enough. And let's love those. It, it, it used to be talking about love the unlovable. Um, just love. If love is in you, then love comes out of you. If love is in you, love comes out of you. It doesn't matter if, the, if other people receive it or not. You just love. You just love. Because I think God rewards us even more for allowing him to love through us. For him, us allowing him to love through us. I thank God for you. And again, I love you and continue to pray for you. Let's continue to pray for one another and check your love meter. Check your love meter and make sure we're growing in love. God bless you. You have a wonderful day.